Recreational fishers have always expressed concern about ways that they can ensure the sustainability of the resource. The concern about having undersized dead fish drift away led to a number of them to question the need for such management. The release weight gives a clear and simple mechanism for the recreational sector to improve the survival of their fish and that's manifested itself in many more recreational fishers taking personal responsibility for their handling, for improving the survival, for ensuring the fish that they release are available for themselves, their friends and other users of the aquatic resource into the future. The necessary release of deep water reef fish back into the ocean has often been a disheartening experience. The effects caused by barotrauma make it almost impossible for the fish to return to their natural death unaided. Barotrauma is a result of the expansion of gases in the swim bladder and other organs of the fish when they do not have enough time to adjust to the rapid changes in water pressure as they are rapidly pulled to the surface. You can see the effects of barotrauma in the form of an inflated abdomen, bulging eyes, stomach protruding from the mouth and distended intestines. Although it seems fatal, the fish can and does recover from barotrauma by promptly returning to its natural depth. A concerned recreational fisherman named Gary Lilly was so upset by the fish's demise, he invented a release weight in an effort to drastically reduce the fatality rate. He thought the simple idea to get a fish down to the depth it was caught at would improve its survival. So he made up a sinker and put a small hook on it and started dropping fish down to the bottom and it seemed to make a big difference. So Gary Lilly approached Wreckfish West and he approached the National, Australian National Sports Fishing Association to try and get this release weight put into commercial production. We approached Healthway and were able to get funding for a mould and Hills Mako Tackle originally agreed to produce these sinkers. The company agreed to subsidise the cost so that recreational fishers wouldn't have a high price to act as an impediment for the release. Wreckfish West was also able to obtain funding from the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation through the Department of Fisheries in Murdoch University to test the survival rates of fish released the traditional way which is chucking them back over the side by venting them or releasing the gas in their swim bladders or by using the release weight. And I'm extremely pleased to be able to report the results of those findings showed that for West Australian Jewfish there is a massive benefit from using a release weight. Once the funding and support was secured, manufacturing of the release weight began in earnest, proudly provided by Sunset Sinker Supplies. Designed to take the fish to the ocean bottom, the release weight reverses the effects of barotrauma, allowing the fish to return to its natural state and greatly increasing the fish's overall survival rate. The release weight is essentially a weighted barbless hook. The hook is placed through the jaw of the fish, or the upper lip, easier to achieve by pulling the lip down in order to expose the flesh of the mouth in which the hook can more easily penetrate. When the fish reaches the ocean bottom, a simple tug on the line is enough to detach the fish. The release weight can be attached to an existing fishing rig or used on a rod and reel or hand line specifically set aside for this purpose. The complete release procedure can be performed by one person for a small fish, while larger fish will need the cooperation of two people. The emergence of the release weight as a popular method of releasing demersal fish motivated the development of a research project by Wreckfish West. The project was funded by the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation, Murdoch University and the Department of Fisheries and was named Maximising the Survival of Released Undersized West Coast Reef Fish. Information collected during this project has helped provide a better understanding of the post-release survival of some important reef species. Yeah, well research recently concluded on the west coast here has really proven the release weight to be very effective um, on certain species um, on the west coast, particularly West Australian Jewfish and break sea cod. Um, recapture rates show that fish subjected to that method of release uh, have a much greater chance of survival, um, up to sort of two to three times greater chance of survival. The recapture rates of dewfish fall dramatically, from a high of up to 18% in shallow waters less than 30 metres to below 2% between 60 to 69 metres. The release weight 
was proven to be the best method for the survival of dewfish with a recapture rate of 10.1%, whereas venting has the lowest, being 2.5%. The recaptures during this study have shown that the release weight is effective in aiding the survival of fish caught in quite deep waters. Uh, we've had dewfish and break sea cod recaptured in waters of greater than 90 metres. This research has proven the release weight to be the superior technique for releasing demersal reef fish with recaptures of tagged fish providing fascinating insight into the species movement. Particularly with the West Australian dewfish, the, the tagging uh, research that was as part of the overall release fish survival project shows that um, the dewfish really have a small home range and don't move very far off their reef. So if, if you uh, look after a particular fish as best you can to maximise its chances of survival, then um, you're likely to recapture that fish at the same spot that you released it. The release weight can be found at most fishing tackle and supply stores. Support from the retail industry has been widely supportive. We can show them not only where the product is in the store, but also how to use them effectively. It's one thing to, to have a release weight, but it's another thing to know actually how to use it. You know, we can take them through correct fish handling techniques as, as well as um, how to use the release weight and, and the, best, you know, the best way to use it and what fish to use it with and what fish not to use it with. There are currently two sizes of release weight, a 20 ounce model and a 40 ounce model. Uh, the 40 ounce model, um, obviously for your bigger fish, the bigger the fish, the bigger release weight you need. Um, I suggest a 20 ounce model, um, we kind of suggest only use it at a depth of about 30 metres or so. Anything more than that go the, the 40 ounce model, it just gets the fish down a lot quicker. Any fish bigger than say 6 or 8 kilos definitely use a 40 ounce model. One out of 100 anglers might have known about release weights 4 or 5 years ago, uh, but these days quite a few people are coming in and even if they don't use them themselves, at least they know about them and know what they're used for and you know, are getting their message about handling techniques and the, the need to release these demersal fish. In a relatively short space of time of three to five years since the introduction of the release weight, the attitudes towards releasing deep water reef fish have improved dramatically. And a lot of the credit for that has to go to the uh, original inventors of the release weight and for those people who've pr promoted its use amongst the wider angling community. So from the efforts of a single concerned individual leading to the invention of the release weight, recreational fishers have now been able to make a tangible difference to the survival of the released fish and to the future of the sport they love. Mm.